Hi folks, welcome to the first Fusion Friday in the new shop. Super exciting. Local school bought a robo drill and they use it for their robotics program, which is a little bit odd because they don't really use it as a CNC mill. It's a beautiful machine. And they have it churning out these robo drill uh, factory default FANUC business card holders. And then one of the fellows there said, hey, can you help us figure out how we can get these to make our school's logo on it? And so we actually did that as a prior Fusion Friday when we showed importing the SVG file to extract it down onto this shape. Um, but here's what's, this is mind blowing to me. Fusion 360 is really good at de-featuring parts. And I want to show you on this part, which is easy, and then importing some parts from McMaster, which is a huge time saver. So we got this part from Fanuc, and we appreciate them sending it over to us. And I thought, well, this is going to be interesting because I don't do a lot of this sort of 3D modeling, um, curvy type stuff. And the way you can de-feature stuff in Fusion 360 normally is you click on it like this and hit delete or backspace. And that de-featured it, but not how we wanted. And when that happened, I thought, this isn't any good. But uh, Curtis Chan helped me out on this one, so appreciate Kurt's help. This is amazing, folks. Drag a box around all of it. I have no idea how this works. Hit the delete key. Uh, amazing. The only thing I'll mention is, remember, folks, Fusion 360 in most CAD software, when you drag a box left to right, it only selects what you're fully enclosing in that box. Whereas if you drag right to left, it'll select anything that's touching any part of that box. So that's really powerful, especially if you're getting into detailed work on sketches or selecting zones and so forth. So just like that, folks, gone. Now we're at the point where we can import that SVG file and remake this part. Here's some footage playing with that robo drill. It's a really cool machine high spindle, high speed, and it's got the FANUC robotic arm that loads and unloads out of a tray with a vision camera. Uh, definitely more, I think we're going to make a Wednesday widget out of doing something with that as well. Here's another awesome thing for Fusion 360. Whether you're building assemblies, uh, bringing in parts as reference stuff, or you're just looking to not reinvent the wheel, let's go to McMaster car and pull up a shoulder bolt. And we'll say it's a shoulder diameter of half an inch and three quarter inch long. And we get a couple of these options. I'll click on this alloy steel guy here and see how it says CAD. Well, don't click on it here. Uh, the reason I showed you here is I think it's way easier to navigate the McMaster website in a browser like Chrome or Firefox. But I copy and pasted that part number. Now in Fusion 360, we'll do, uh, we'll just put it in this, well, here, we'll do a new file. Insert. McMaster car component, paste. Now you see how this browser window is kind of small? It's a little bit of a pain, like I said. So that's why I like navigating elsewhere. I'm going to click on that product detail. Not everything in McMaster has CAD models, but a lot of stuff does. And you're going to want to scroll down here. And I suggest selecting the step file. That's the best format I find for importing this stuff in. Click Save. It's going to automatically import it into Fusion 360. Uh, click OK here as a new component, which is important for proper K, uh, CAD etiquette. And if we activate it, here is what's amazing. OK, so let's say this was just a, we need to make some custom pins on a lathe and we, we didn't want to model this. We just wanted to do something like it. Well, we don't want this hex head. So one, two, I'm holding down control as I click these different faces. Deleted. It left that chamfer in there. Deleted. Let's say I don't want the end chamfer. Ooh, interesting. Usually that kind of thing works. Um, hmm, let's see if we can figure this out. Huh, well, so you could defeature all that. That's going to be a pain in the butt. I'll show you a fix for that in a second. So it's not perfect, but I think it works with the threads, which is also pretty darn cool. If I take and pick the threads here, hit delete, uh, amazing. And here, in fact, let's go add threads back to it. We'll do create thread, and I'll pick my size here. Here, we'll click this. And let's say, yeah, let's say we want to do something different, half inch uh, 13, and we'll have them modeled. 
a little funny looking, but you get the idea. And then, you know, I don't want that fill it there for some reason. Oh, come on. That doesn't work. That should work. That's silly. Uh, that worked. If we wanted to get rid of these, the easiest thing to do would be hit C for sketch, a circle. I'll pick that plane and it'll snap to. So now I've got a thing I can extrude down. Q for press pull. Click both of them and I'll extrude two. So I'll change the extents from distance to two and match the shape of here. No, nope, want to cut. I want to join. Click OK. Now those are gone and you see our funny looking little part. Also works with something more complicated like a gear, a little bit more realistic for something you wouldn't want to remodel. Pull one up. I'm just going to pick a random gear. See here, screw and keyway, that's a good example. So here's something. Part number. There we go. Before I paste this in, actually, I'm going to want to go up here and activate the component. I don't want to, I have the component active down here. When I insert it, it's going to insert it as a sub component, which you don't want. Insert, paste, scroll down, step file, save. Boom. And we'll hide our solder bolt. So let's play with this thing. Um, well, that's cool. I didn't know they included the screw with it. Let's take a look at that. So it probably is a second body. It is. So we can just hide that. And let's say that we don't want this keyway. Let's just try. It's thinking. Ooh, is it going to crash on me? It did crash on me, which is a good note of don't do this with the file you haven't saved because this is kind of pushing the envelope a little. Uh, I think I figured it out here. We need to delete the thread at whole first because it's too much. If you think about it, it is kind of a weird thing to deal with. So we delete that and it leaves some residual geometry, which we'll just delete like so. And okay, I and mean, we still get some weird stuff. So here we'll delete this stuff. You, sometimes if you click um, multiple things at once, I think it lets it see what you're trying to do, and it, it actually works a little bit better. So that should delete and square that. Yeah, squared up that wall. I'll do the same thing over here. Make sure I kind of get everything awesome. So now we've got a straight wall, and it should be pretty easy to say select. Uh, if we see what happened, the chamfer may screw this up. Yeah, so the chamfer makes that a little bit weird. No big deal. We can delete, you know, all of this and then add a chamfer back. Amazing. See how it picked the chamfer back up on the through circle? Um, same thing over here. And then it's just amazing. If you wanted to change this to a, well, here, we can just, we'll just do it. Delete the whole thing. And now we could go, say, add a hex pattern through it. Uh, polygon circumscribed, click on this face, sketch something, Q for press pull and extrude it through. And uh, if we wanted to add a cross hole again, we could say hit C for circle right here. And even though it doesn't look like I'm sketching there because you see the part, if I hit, if I actually am 0.201 and Q for press pull, extrude that out. And heck, if we even want to model the threads back in this, create thread, cl click on her, we'll say quarter inch and quarter by 20, we'll model them. Amazing, folks. So, hope you enjoyed that. We love making these Fusion Friday videos and Fusion 360 tutorials. 
If you enjoy them, please consider clicking subscribe, sharing this video with your friend, the thumbs up. We make all these CAD models available to folks that support us on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, you get access to monthly private uh, live videos where we talk about what's going on in the shop and in specific help projects, as well as all access to all these CAD files. And if you have topics you want to see, shoot us an email or post in the comments below and we'll try to get to them. Take care, folks.